back in Eugene, back in town, you spent a little time away. How does it feel to be back here? Uh, you know, we, we, we really appreciate being back um, in Oregon. My wife loves it here. Um, it's a great area, great area for a family. Uh, landscape's a little different than we're used to. Uh, mountains and oceans and, and a lot of cool things to do outside, but the people are, are very similar to Iowa where we grew up. Very hardworking people, uh, very kind people, so it feels like home here. What was it about uh, Eugene going from, you know, in Eugene once, off to Philly with Chip, and then coming back? What was it about uh, Oregon, about Eugene that brought you back again? Well, I mean, th things always change. Your situation always changes. But um, I thought, you know, in, in, in my heart that I really wanted to try the NFL. And, I, you know, and Coach Kelly gave me the opportunity, so I took it. Um, but I really, I really love coaching the college-age guys. I think it's a very rewarding experience. And, you know, the only, probably the only program in the country I would have came back to is Oregon because what Chip's got going out in Philly is so special, but this is a place that drew to me. This is a place we felt comfortable and this is the place we wanted to be. Working with Chip, working with him here, working with him in Philly, what has he taught you? What did you learn from him? Well, I think learning from him, um, his coaching style is unlike a lot of other people's and, um, you know, he, he got this program kind of to where it was when I left and Coach Helfrich has continued that and he's going to take it even farther. Um, but Chip really knows how to deal with people and how to manage his staff and how to pick his staff and, and how to handle the players. Um, you know, the other thing I learned from him is the only answer, the only wrong answer is that's the way we've always done it. Let's try to figure out how we can make it better. Scientifically, how is it better? Don't worry about tradition. Let, let's do what's best for the Oregon Ducks. Let's do what's best for the Philadelphia Eagles. And let's make our team better. How has the program changed in just one year away? How has it changed from when Chip was in charge to now Mark being in charge? Well, I don't think the, the structure of the program has changed, but um, Coach Helfrich, is, he's put his own stamp on things, and he's, he's doing things now. He's tweaking the margins. The, 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 you know, the, the, the setup is good. Now what he's doing is he's trying to push the boundaries even farther um, to get us over that hill. You know, he wants to take this thing all the way to the top and he's just, you know, he's tweaked recruiting a little bit and, and just the way we practice and some of the things that he wants to implement. But I think everything he's done is, is spot on and it's really going to help us. What was it like working with Jerry? You go from, from Eugene following him to Philly. What was it like working with him there? Um, it really was no different. We kind of kept our, our same, we, we were comfortable with each other and we, we kept our same act as you will. Um, he didn't change. Nobody changed. I think people expect you to change when, when you move on to bigger and better things, but that's the, the beauty of, of Chip and, and Coach Az. They don't change. They are who they are, and they know how, to, how they want things, and that's how it's going to be. Philadelphia is one of those die-hard football cities. They love their Eagles. They're all in about them. When Chip came to town, there was so much talk, so much buzz. Can he make things work there? Can he bring his system, the way that he did things in Eugene with him, or is he going to have to change? What did you see that was successful for him bringing his, the way he does things, bringing, you know, the way he analyzes players, the way he analyzes the system, the pace, the practice style? What was it about bringing that with him to Philly that worked, that seemed to make sense? Because now it seems like there are people out there who are saying, all right, I, I get it. All right, Chip, I'm on board. Well, I think, you know, Chip wasn't going to change, and we didn't know any different. That's the way we operated, and that's the way we were going to operate. We, we had always been successful. We were going to continue to be successful in our eyes. You know, we didn't know. We, no one knows for sure, but we thought we had the good system in place. Let's keep this thing going. Let's see what happens because we thought it was right. Um, now, things changed a little bit. He made some tweaks. You know, you always have to tweak when you go from a 105-man roster to a 53-man roster, but the things you saw were – there's a little resistance from the players at first. There always is when you change things. But as they begin to see, this, is, this makes me feel better. This makes me play better. I feel more recovered. I feel like I'm better on game day. I feel like I can practice harder on Wednesday and Thursday because you guys got us out there on Tuesday and do what you do and all the recovery modalities and all that kind of thing. So I, I don't think that we want to change things. We want to keep it rolling. We just had to convince everybody else it was right. How long did it take to convince them? Was it pretty fast, or did it take a long time for people to start to see, okay, we get what you're doing, Chip? Well, that, that roster had turned over. They were, Coach Reed did a great job with those guys um, during his tenure, but that roster had turned over. There wasn't a ton of guys left from the glory days of, of Coach Reed and the Eagles, so the roster was getting new, and they were in a place where they hadn't won a lot. 
and they were ready for change. Um, did they know it was right? Some of it they fought. They didn't know exactly, but they were ready for a change. And then they, the veterans kind of said, guys, this is helping us. You need to get on board. And some of those veterans like a D'Amico Ryans, um, you know, and like a Nick Foles and Mike Vick and those guys, they said, guys, this is going to work. Let's go. And once the veterans bought in, it was, it was full sales ahead. Did you find yourself having to spend a long time, a little time, uh, a normal amount of time trying to show these guys, teach them and help them understand exactly what's going on? No, I, I think that's one thing about, you know, Chip is he never tells the guys, we're just going to go do this and that's what you're going to do. He says, hey guys, we're going to do this. This is why. This is the benefits. Here's the process. You got to enjoy the process and the benefits are going to come, but you can't skip steps. And here's why we're doing things. And I think players at every level, high school, college, NFL, as long as you tell them why you're doing it, how you're going to do it, and what's going to be the results, they're, they're, going, to, they're going to be in. You've moved around to a, a couple different programs. You know, you've, you've seen the football landscape in many different locations, specifically you know, working with a current coach, current colleague, with Scott Frost. Uh, what was that experience in Northern Iowa like with him? Uh, you know, all of our stops along the way have been good. Um, I've learned so much football from so many guys. Um, it's been so beneficial to me. And, you know, being with a friend of mine, Scott Frost, you know, he was a friend of mine, um, you know, before you and I, then we got to coach together. We lived together there. When I first came out here, we lived together. My wife spent a year in, you know, in Iowa. And, and so just having somebody that, that's a friend of yours is always, is always helpful. Now the staff here is awesome. They're welcome to everybody with open arms, but to have somebody in your corner always is, is a great thing. He's so well known. Scott is so well known as the offensive guy, uh, the guy who was lauded and celebrated in college and the offensive mind that he is now, but he was working on defense as well. What kind of a defensive mind is this guy? Well, I think, I think when you're talking about him, you, you know, he just got a great football mind because I was on offense there, he was on defense. When you're at a, a lower level program, one double A football, um, you get the best coaches you can find and you kind of plug and play. I um, mean, you, you know, it's just who, who can coach football, who can communicate to guys, who can teach skills, who can teach fundamentals, and then will the players listen to them? And I think that's, that's the game of football. You see, you know, some guys say, well, how can he move to offense to defense? Because he knows how to communicate and he knows how to teach. Now, he may have to learn a few new plays and a, a few new tweaks here and there, but he knows how to teach guys. And if you can teach guys, you can coach any position you want to. I want to go back even further in your, back to your playing career. Back at Iowa, Ron Aiken was a guy you crossed paths with. He was on the staff. He was your coach at the time. Now, is he, now he's your colleague. What was it like when he was your coach? Uh, you know, I always, I always admired Coach Aiken. Um, you know, back then I was on the offensive side some, and he was on the defensive side. But um, I always admired him. He was always so positive with the guys. He got a lot out of his players. They played so hard for him, and all, all his players loved him. Um, so I, I always knew that he was a he was a great coach. I didn't have the opportunity to be coached directly by him, but I always heard him on the practice field. You know, I could feel the energy from him. And then when he left to go to Arizona, he continued that way. Um, so I, I think it's awesome to kind of come full circle and be with him again. Uh, let's bring it back to Eugene, bring it back to the Oregon Ducks. Uh, what's the difference as a defensive coordinator standpoint? What's the difference that you've seen between those two guys? Between Don, between yeah. DP? Um, you, you know, Nick, when, when I first got here, he was, he was awesome to me. Um, he, he taught me a lot of football. He gave me a lot of responsibility when I first got here, even though he didn't know me very well. And, and we developed a good relationship. And, you know, off the field, he was awesome to me. I was over at his home and we went and golfed and did all kinds of things. Um, and I saw the defense evolve as his time as defensive coordinator. You know, we evolved from four down, um, you know, whatever coverage we were playing at that time to three down and a little more zone pressure. And, and some different things that were going on. And he always kind of kept up with the, with the times as far as the offense evolving the Pac-12. And now I think DP is taking that structure that was already there and he's putting his stamp on it. And I think you're gonna see maybe a little more aggressive play. Um, he's, he's fine tuning some things that he likes better. Um, you know, not, not, that it's, not that it's structurally different, not that you may notice a ton on game day, but they're just the little things that he likes you know, better in that scheme. And he, he, he does things you know, he asked for things from Philadelphia. He asked John Neal things that he's done in the past. He asked Ron Aiken things that they did in Arizona. So he wants to take the best of everything and kind of mesh it into one. Do you feel like you have something to prove this year coming back to Oregon for a second time? Do you feel like there's something that you want to prove or something you want to achieve? 
Well, I think you, you always want to do the best you can. Um, would we love to win a national championship? Absolutely. I don't think you're, I think you're fooling yourself if you're going to, you know, if you're going to say that you don't. But the, the beautiful thing about this place is the goal is to win the national championship. The process is we win the day. So you, you keep that in the back burner. We have to win today. We, we got another practice this afternoon. If we don't win that one, we're taking a step behind. So we got to keep going every single day. Um, would I like to shut everybody out? Absolutely. But this is the Pac-12. There's great offenses everywhere. So I just want to see our guys run the football, tackle the football, and cause some turnovers. If we can be the best team in the country, if we can lead the country in effort, my job will be done, I think. Does it feel like 2014 is a Pac-12 title, national title, or bust kind of season? No, I don't think you ever have to put that kind of pressure on yourself. I think once you eclipse the, the point of being a, a top echelon team, that the goal of, of winning big is always in, in the rearview mirror, but the, the process has to stay the same here. So I don't think you can ever say win or bust, but you just have to, you have to keep going. And, and, and Coach Elfrich has laid out the, the process for us, and it starts with win the day, and that's what we have to do then what would make this season a success in your eyes and in the eyes of this program? Well, I mean, the people around here are, are, are getting to the point where they're used to us winning. Uh, and I think, I think everybody wants to see, you know, we, we have to take care of the, the Pac-12, you know, our side of the Pac-12 first. And then if we were fortunate enough to get to the championship game, that'd be awesome to win that thing. Um, you know, and I think everybody wants to see this, this college playoff deal pay off. And I hope it does. And if we can get there, that'll, that will really be a, a nice topping for the cake, I guess. Would you describe the expectations at linebacker? What are you hoping to see? What do you expect to see from, the, from that group this year? Well, I expect those guys to lead. I mean, they have to lead in practice. They have to lead on the game. They have to get us lined up correctly. They have to make the call. And then once the call is made and everybody's set, they have to go like crazy. We, we have to, in that position, especially at outside linebacker, we have to win. I mean, it has to be, if we're on a tight end, we have to be able to beat him. If we're on a slot receiver, we have to be able to beat that guy. If we're rushing the pass versus the tackle, we have to have a win. I'm telling those guys, we're guaranteeing you guys are going to win for us. Everybody else has their own battle going on within the defense, but you're going to win. And so if we can win, we'll, we'll, we'll get everybody else to the ball and we'll, we'll play good defense. Are the young guys, the freshmen, the sophomores, are they improving in the way that they could make that kind of thing happen? Absolutely. Every, everybody's improving. Um, you know, we're... we're we're kind of at the point where we're trying to sort this depth chart out and figure out who's, who's at the top and you know, who's in the middle and who's in that improvement category. And there's definitely a few freshmen that are pushing the envelope. The, the question for us is, do they have the skills? Yes. Can they get involved in the defense and learn the whole package and know what they're doing? That, that's the question. Who are some of those young guys that you think could really push the veterans, push for playing time, and push for substantial playing time? Well, I mean, you know, you, those young, the real, real young guys, those true, you know, those true freshmen are, you know, Jimmy Swain, he's got skills. He, there's no question. He flashes all the time. Can he learn the whole thing? Justin Hollins, he's got big time ability, big time ability. He's got all the tools you want. Can he learn the whole thing? We don't know. John Neal's got a bunch of DBs in, in the back end that are all kind of pushing, and he's got, he's got some heated battles going back there, um, you know, as well as the, up front, the D linemen, those young guys that, that Coach Aiken brought in, they're really playing hard. Um, you know, and I don't know exactly how he's got those guys all graded, but I know I watch them on tape, and they're playing like crazy, and they, they, want, they want to contribute to this team. We're used to hearing names like Tyson, Tarodney, and them, and we, we've been talking about them through fall camp periodically, and I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about them for a while. What do you like about the way they've been practicing, the effort and the work ethic they've been putting in so far this year? Well, Tyson and Tarodney, I mean, those guys can really run, and they, they do it all the time. I mean, they're chasing the ball constantly, whether it's you know throwing ball thrown over their head, whether they're running it down in the flat. They, their, their motors are unbelievable, and they have great effort. To Rodney has come, you know, leaps and bounds as far as his maturation um, with regards to football. You know, he's a great kid. He's happy. He, he wants to be part of the team, and now he's really learning about football. He understands concepts. He just doesn't understand. I line up here. I go, you know, take on that block. Now he knows what's going on behind him. He knows what's going on inside of him. So he's going to really help us. And Tyson. You know, Tyson's a guy that, you know, takes notes. Every time I say a word, he writes it down. And so we go out on the field. He doesn't need a rep. He writes it down, and he can go out in the field and operate. So I'm really looking forward to those two guys. Before we call it a day, before we wrap this up completely, um, I want to throw you through a lightning round, have a little bit of fun before we say goodbye. I'm going to spout off a few names. 
uh, you have one word or one phrase to describe each of these guys. So starting it off, Tyson Coleman. Um, let's go uh, fast. Christian French. Long. Taradney Prevo. Lightning. And Tony Washington. Uh, steady. One more. Your wife, Megan. Oh, my rock does it all. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank I you. really appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you.